Good morning everyone and welcome back to the garage. It's been a while since I had time to shoot a video. I've just been editing all stuff I filmed. So yeah, I'm quite happy and excited to be here. Hope you are as well. It's a lovely but a bit chilly morning. Still nice. And I've got a couple of hours before I need to get ready for work. So I thought I might as well do something nice. Something I've been wanting to do for quite a while. And I've got a check engine light on my car. Something I may or may not try to put in the video. Probably not, I'll try to keep the content more motorcycle related. But I thought this flight video is, uh, is interesting, might be nice to share. So yeah, let's get straight into it. So this is the light we're talking about. I'll try to do a quick presentation in case you're not familiar with them. This is a Sealy product, but someone else probably makes them. They're probably all made in China. I think uh, if you're in the States, or if you were in the States, you could buy this for under a different brand. Same in Australia, but anyway, it's a Sealy here in the UK. So what does it actually do? Well, as the name of the title would suggest, it's made to, to work on your car under the bonnet. So you put it together, uh, got the two sides which you pull out, hook onto your bonnet, and you just turn the light on. It's got a switch on this side, doesn't work now, not because it's broken, but because battery's dead. We'll get to that in a bit. And uh, that's it. Fold it back when you don't want to use it. It's quite neat, doesn't take much space. And I wanted these for quite a while. And uh, I just found them either too cheap. I probably, if this was near, probably wouldn't pay the money for it. Because, it, well, I'll, I'll tell you why in a bit. But anyway, the one, the one I wanted to get was a Mac Tools one because that takes my DeWalt batteries, but that was very expensive, so but that's too much for light. So yeah, I'm gonna make this, hopefully, into what I wanted to buy in the first place. Right, so what's the story with this light? Bought it off eBay, saw it on an auction, interested, bid on it, and won. The seller kept delaying to ship it, saying it, you know, I think it was a lady, she didn't have time or stuff like that. Anyway, I was patient, didn't really uh, want to lose it because I actually did want it. So you cannot buy this new anymore and even used there, pretty hard to find. So I was patient and eventually she told me she actually lost the power adapter, the charger for it. And uh, yeah, so if I wanted to cancel the order or send it anyway. Uh, so I looked it up, I, I saw about how much it would cost me to buy a new power adapter. and proposed to, to get a partial refund for that and just pay the rest for the light which she or he agreed to and here it is it actually worked and I've used it until I emptied out the batteries and uh, yeah I was gonna buy a power adapter which is about 10 pounds then I thought can I do something better than that here's why so here are some of the lights I use around the garage I, if I look hard enough, I probably find a few more. I now have a few corded ones, but you know I didn't want to bring those on the table. I still use them, especially when I work outside on the car. But um, yeah, anyway, I used to use these head-mounted ones quite a lot. Not so much anymore, because I pretty much don't use any of my battery-powered lights because I don't like replacing batteries, or I don't like buying batteries. Maybe I should say. So yeah, these fit, get very rarely use them. So these are my three main lights, which I like all of them. Like this one, because it's cheap. This is my go-to one, this is the one I grab first. Probably because it's black and I can't see my oily fingerprints on it. It's cheap and I don't really mind if I kill it. And that's about all it has going for it. And it's also quite bright, it does the job. This is the next one, probably which is a very nice DeWalt. Um, yeah, pretty much I use this when that's not working anymore. And this is the Ryobi one. I like this one, I, have to, I just put it somewhere, just angle its head to point at something. I think this is really nice. So this is standing on the bench or under a car most of the time when it's used. But yeah, back to my go-to light. This has one big problem with it. The batteries are inside. Charge it up 
use it and usually it dies when I need it the most so yeah you can't really avoid that but what happens then is I take the back cover off and I put it on charge and leave it for a few hours that's when I get to this one this one as soon as it dies take the battery out put a new one and off we go and that's what I want because I always found myself losing this light in the middle of a job and because I turn the power off in the garage when I'm not here it's not like I can leave it on charge and just have it charged all the time so this is what I want for my under bonnet light so back to the bonnet light I guess you figure out by now I want this to have replaceable batteries because it's not such a big deal when I run out of batteries in my handheld light because I've got several but on this one is the only bonnet light I have and it's the only one I want to have because it, it is quite big I don't want to have several of these taking space in my overfilled garage so yeah I want to make this have replaceable batteries rather than the rechargeable battery it has inside so back to the 10 pound power adapter or charger for this can I do better for the same money well apparently yes I can with some patience because I had to order all the bits from China to actually put it in 10 quid so yes ideally I want to make this run on my Dewalt 18 volt batteries or 20 volt if you're in the States I also have some Ryobi batteries but um, yeah it, it, you obviously want to keep this pretty light because you don't want it pulling your bonnet down all the time so this is just a bit too big but having one of these stuck on the side not that big of a deal probably even better would be some of these 10.8 volt batteries or 12 volt if you're in the States again which they're pretty tiny this would have been nicer but I didn't find the right adapter for it so yeah I've got several of these various sizes and probably the smaller ones are the ones I want to use because they're again lighter they won't pull the bonnet down but yeah in order to put this battery on the light I've got a few problems to solve first I guess the first and obvious one is how do I attach it nothing to put it on well here's the solution to the first problem it's a little adapter like my battery in it have this probably bolted on the side I think for now haven't really made a plan for that yet have the wires going in and powering the light first problem solved second problem then if you look right in there it says 7.4 volts battery is 18 what do I do about that well you can find these little buck connectors or step down connectors or adapters whatever they're called so basically this will allow me to put 18 volts in and adjust what I want to get out which is 7.4 volts so yeah this should be the solution to my second problem and a third problem is how do I stop the battery from running completely flat because that that will probably kill it and I'm not that familiar with these batteries I haven't taken too many apart but I think the bigger ones have some sort of protection for over discharge but the small ones don't or the older ones older generations don't so regardless of whether they do or they don't to add a bit of extra safety I've decided to add one of these which you can't really see it's a little uh, voltmeter it's a little display I can just put it on the side somewhere make a slot for it somewhere visible and I'll just have to measure one of these batteries once I finish with the power tool it's completely empty I'll measure the voltage and then I know what's the minimum I want to read on here I could just put a label under it to, um, to remind me so hopefully that solves all the issues I have with uh, adding one of these batteries to my light and all of these all these three bits were about 10 pounds about the same price I would have paid for a new charger so I'm pretty happy with that. Now I just need to find a way to put it all together. Right, let's see what's inside.
we go. So we've got the charging port with some clever electronics. Don't know what it does, maybe just regulates the charging. Got a switch here, an on off switch with the big resistor. Probably maybe that's just for dimming the lights. Let's see the battery as well. And there we go, just the battery. Won't need this anymore. So here's the plan. I took it apart more than I actually wanted to, just to understand how it works. Hope I can put it back together. Taking the spring out of there and tensioning it again might be tricky. But anyway, here's how I think it'll go. Got this side, add the battery connector to it, so the battery slides this way. Just make sure I clear my bolts. Two holes in there for my wires. But after this is gonna be my step down converter, which is gonna live in there probably, instead of the old battery. And from that, these two wires are going to go to the step down converter. And also soldered together would be my voltmeter, which I think the best place to put it is right there. Cut a slot in there, uh, glue this to one side, cut a slot in the other side with that just sliding so I can take it apart. And also cut a section out of my top bit so when it slides on, it clears my voltmeter. So it's going to be right in there, pretty visible, so that might work. Let's see how that goes. I'll have to leave it for now and come back tomorrow. Okay, it's the next day. I uh, haven't been very consistent with filming this, but here's as far as I got. Got my voltmeter bonded in place. And now I just need to cut a little slot in there for my cables to be able to come in inside in the battery section where I'll have my uh, step down converter. And also I need to cut a little slot in the side for the wires to come from the battery in here. So yeah, once I've done that, I should be able to reassemble everything. I still don't know why I need three wires here. On the LED strip it says VCC, G- and R-, which could be green and red. But this doesn't change color as far as I know, so I'm a bit confused. I probably should test it and see if I actually need this, but the people that made it, I assume, knew what they were doing. Um, so I decided to just leave it there. That means I have to keep this little circuit board or charging system, whatever it does. I have a wire that's broken, I have to solder that back. Right, so I've got the first part reassembled, which is all good. I've got a variable power supply set to 7.4 volts, and I think I'm ready to cut the battery off. And um, connect the power supply and see if it actually turns on. Let's find out. And interestingly, it's always on. <clears throat> so maybe I've soldered my wire in the wrong place. But I'm pretty sure that's where it was. Now I'd be curious to find out what happens if I unplug this. Nothing. So you sort of wonder why it's there in the first place. But the main thing is it's it's working. So I might rethink this, cut those wires off and solder them to my step down converter. And voltmeter and do it uh, and connect the battery straight to the switch so I disconnect everything from the battery not not just the actual light as I was planning before so before I start soldering this together I just want to mark and cut the the slot for the voltmeter I think what I'm gonna do is just take that mark there put both halves together Got a mark on either side, <clears throat> and I'll just me measure the width of the voltmeter and mark my sides. And once I've done that, I'm gonna go over to the little mill and actually start cutting. And here it is, it's all done, it fits. Uh, I had to cut two extra, uh, what do you call it, cutouts, whatever from my little tabs on the voltmeter. Uh, and I didn't measure and I just overdid it. So yeah, it, that could have been better, but it's not terrible. Um, 
the other side is actually better just a smaller gap this one for some reason it's a bit more so what I've done is I, I put the slot in the middle of my part but I think the actual voltmeter when I glued it on it must be to one side which is fine uh, there's this cover coming on top of it anyway so when I do that when I put this in I'll try to get the, the slot just right so it's a nice snug, nice snug fit around it but anyway here we are uh, I think we're ready to solder bits on I'm actually gonna screw this back in the cover because I don't want that hole to be blank so might as well put it in So I'm measuring the output of my step down converter now and I need to set it to 7.4 volts. Just gonna leave it there and I'm gonna check again after I connect my LEDs because uh, once you put a load on it the voltage might drop so I'm gonna readjust it then and it should be fine. So it's always important to do this before you actually connect it up because if I would have just soldered my LED lights onto this, flip the switch, it's, it would burn them out at 17 volts. So yeah, it's set up pretty close to where I want it now. Solder the lights and check again. And here it is. Got the side nearly all assembled and it's working. Which is great news. Happy with that. Now, just need to push this in and tension the spring back. So what I've done is I've Cut a piece of wire wrapped around the spring, feed it through the hole, and there it is. Cut the spring through. I've got the little screw they used to keep this in place. And there we go. So here we are, nearly there. The wall battery is here, it's quite solid, which I kind of like the look of it, it looks great. Uh, it works, which is the main thing. Both sides work. So yeah, two things left to do, and that is making this cover fit. So sliding it on, make a little cutout for the voltmeter. And second thing is take it out at night, put it under the bonnet, and see what it actually looks like. So yeah, first things first, let's start with this cover. So that's right to the edge, so that's where I'll cut. So here it is, it's all done, cut for the uh, voltmeter is pretty pretty good. Uh, I, was gonna, I was planning on filming how I put it in place but I just wanted to check the fit and it just snapped in place and I don't really want to take it off again. It could be a bit tighter, I came a bit too too far in here but it's fine, it's, uh, it's good, it's, uh, I'm happy with it, it works, it's, that's the main bit. and. Yeah, one thing I need to do now is, once I run out of batteries on one of my dual power tools, I need to measure the voltage, so I know the min what the minimum I can go to is. But um, yeah, this probably is pretty low now. We'll see. 
So uh, tonight hopefully I'm gonna film this under the bonnet and see what the light actually looks like. So there we go, all done. Uh, I think it could be a bit brighter for my liking, but still, it's pretty good, uh, happy with it. So all the mods I've done were for about the price of um, a new charger, which I think it makes more sense doing it this way. You get probably more runtime out of it now, plus just replace the batteries when it runs out, which is great. And it's a feature that only pretty expensive uh, lights have that. So yeah, pretty pleased with it. Um, actually liking this just as much as the very expensive Mac Tools one, which takes the same batteries. But yeah, happy days. Thanks for watching and see you next time.